here every day, so I can't ever tell what day of the week it is. But I know it. <laughs> My friends are here. That's right, Pam and Rick, you're standing by. We're going to do listener questions. We've got a cool show for Friday, so go grab some uh, Frito and a soda. we got to share it yeah. on. Oh, that's right. Do you want to do it, Pam? Do it. Or... Okay. Yeah. Thank you. you know what? We're going to share the link to the live show on the Mouse uh -huh. for Less group. Yes. 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 I'm going to share it on my personal timeline. You there know, you go. I do that for the other shows. I just learned how to do that the other day. Good like, job. Days ago. And I just remember when you said that. Let's make this cool. Let's see here. Go there. Oh, <laughs> hey, everybody. Let's see. Share. Write post. I'm not going to write a post. I'm just going to share it and people will see it. Post. They will. Boom. It's on Mike Roman's timeline. All my old teacher friends. I'm sure. Oh, I need to fix this so I can see the comments. Hang on. What's going on here? Da, 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 da. Why is this big old bar at the bottom? Why can't I see a comment? Okay. Share. I can't scoot this thing over. Why is this toolbar so big at the bottom? Huh. Well, shoot. Okay. I guess I don't need to see the recording. That'd be nice to Why is this? Something's up the comment. I'll bet if I do this, let me try this. Oh, I thought you went downstairs. No, I'm up there. No, not you. Actually, I'm still downstairs. <gasps> oh, I can almost get to it. Hang on. Ah, it keeps jumping. Why? You think we've been doing this before? Yeah, one would think. Yeah. Dumb computer. Oh. oh, you know what? Maybe I'll switch sides. Come I'll put this Come over here. here. Come here, Daisy. Daisy. You know what it is? The thing's so different when I do. Daisy. The other side. Don't download iTunes right now, for the love of God. What? Now that's off the window totally. Hang on. Oh, I'm saying come join your friends on the Yay. podcast as they answer your Disney questions. Your I like it. Not our questions. Oh! Mike's angry. I just, it's one of those things like I can see the like little slider. I just need to slide it to the right here. And I can't like. So talk about sliders. I'm hungry. <laughs> We've been getting hit with White Castle commercials like constantly over the last <laughs> Doing, but man, like it, I'm ready to go for it. But oh I man, all night. Mm, that would be awesome. Oh well, let me do this. We don't have White Castle here though. So. Yeah, but you have Crystal. I like crystals. Nope. I uh, no, not the Brown same. Derby Lounge has sliders. There you go. They're so good. It's not the same, by the way. That would be a way to get over like there. Like to be there. Not, Crystal's not the same as White Castle. There we go. I could just use my arrow keys. I didn't know that. I don't know what you're trying to do, but it'd be dangerous. I'm just trying to scoop my just move the picture over a little so I can see the comments on the right side. Oh, I don't got know what's going on? I'm an idiot. All right, hey everybody: Kelly, Dan, Mary, Tim, Jennifer, James, Logan, Eli, Diane, Megan, oh. Maggie, Dan, Tim. I gotta wake up, Julian, mm. and a cast of thousands. Yes. All right. Got What's your question? We got one from the inbox. We need them coming in on the comments. Oh, James, yeah. Prime Rose Sliders from Yacht Club. Oh, yeah. yes. Oh, stop. stop. And from Old House. Mm hmm. Oh, dude. Not, not. Yeah. I'm going to have to ban people from the chat. I'm, no. <laughs> We're supposed to have steak tonight. Not, not going to lie. Stop. You know, I'm having Taco Bell. Steak and started. baked potatoes. Do you know, here's a little thing about Taco Bell I want you to know. That it's gross? That it's awesome. The quality of meat the Taco Bell uses, yeah. we actually are not allowed to have one in our area. Oh, my gosh. Uh, that's such a lie. No, I feel it's not. It's absolutely not a lie. That's why. No Taco Bell and no Kentucky Fried Chicken. Neither. Really? No Kentucky Fried Chicken. Famous oh Bulls. Famous no, Bulls. Famous Bulls made me want to. <laughs> no, I'm out. So no. I'm just telling you that in our township we cannot have either. Wow. Dude, I can't I can't go to Pittsburgh. <laughs> we have plenty of other good places. It's not Pittsburgh proper. It is Cranberry Township. There's there's Taco Bells on every like exit of the interstate, right? I mean, that's how it is everywhere. Well, not if you get off at Cranberry Township. <laughs> you guys correct me up. How do you not have Taco Bell? What's wrong? We have oh, other stuff, but we do not have Taco Bell and we yeah, do not have Kentucky Fried Chicken. Man, 
KFC. I would much rather. Hey, Marge, I'm sorry. getting to the point. I would much rather have Popeyes. So, yeah. I, I still haven't had that sandwich. And we I haven't had the sandwich either. But I do because every time I go to our new Popeyes, the sandwich is out. And that commercial's on constantly during live PD. That guy goes, "Look at you, looking all special." To his sandwich, I do that all the time around here to everybody. <laughs> here, Tom, Pam, or the kids. I'm sure, I'm sure your, your family special. loves it. Anyway, yeah. let's, let's talk Disney. We got to earn the money. <laughs> Do it. Big bucks here on the podcast. Nine okay, here zero we go. Dollars. Yeah, for real. Uh, uh, what number is this? this I don't know. Like a billion. Here it comes. Here it comes. 16. It's coming across the bottom. I didn't write it down. 1673. I should probably write that down. So we got 1673 oh. and 16. Oh, man. I really have to wake up, man. Oof. It's been I, very I get so boring, comfortable Nikki. with you guys. <laughs> I'm just like... <laughs> <laughs> right, just yeah don't yawn because when you yawn it's contagious i know i'm sorry but, trying okay, to fight it here we go welcome to episode 1673 of the be our guest walt disney world trip planning podcast i'm your host mike rollman from be our guest podcast.com and one of the senior agents over at the magic for less travel happy wednesday to you hope you're hanging in there here in the middle of May, just think about it, Memorial Day weekend right around the corner, the unofficial start to summer, which I really don't know what that means here in 2020. Usually it means everybody comes over for a big barbecue, the pools are open, you know, that's a vacation time for us. We always take our big summer vacation in either June or July. Still plan on going to Walt Disney World in July. I want to do 4th of July down there, but we'll see what happens. We're all kind of standing by to see how everything goes. But, you know, summer, nonetheless, you get, like school gets out. I just, I found out my daughter's already out of school. Like uh -huh. what? Like I didn't know, you know, cause like, oh, they just quit giving assignments. You know, that was the last day to do online learning. So it wasn't like they uh, had a big bash this year or anything. It's just like, oh yeah, my, my teacher said we're done and school's out. So that's kind of, okay. it's kind of, you know, 2020, I guess, you know, it's not, not the greatest year of all, but uh, Hey, maybe the second half will be a lot better than the, the it's gotta be the second anything half. Anything going to be better than the first please. half. I'm not going to say anything though, cause I'm not going to say it can't get no. worse. It can't get worse. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, joining me today, we answer your listener questions here on Wednesdays. We have Ricky from touringplans.com and the mouse for less.com. What's up, Ricky? Well, I mean, I, 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 if it wasn't the weird 2020, I'd be getting ready to go on a cruise today. So <laughs> I'm really sad, actually. <laughs> but that's okay. No, well, well, it's fine. To Alaska. I know. I would have been going to Alaska with Pam. So <laughs> I'm really sad today. <laughs> the, the Kodiak bears are going to miss you. Uh, maybe someday I'll get to Alaska now, but uh, as of right now, it ain't happening because I'm here. And so I literally have like, this is the first time I have had zero trips that I'm going on for Memorial Day weekend. Like it's the most unusual thing. Like I'm always going somewhere for Memorial Day weekend and I'm actually going to be home. And it's not like I can do anything because it's just going to be another day. So Yay! It is so weird. Right? We have a cookout. Yeah, uh, okay. yeah definitely. We we cook out every night now <laughs> because it's it's warm outside, and you know, so maybe we'll do with like something special that we don't normally do, like s'mores or something. I don't know, but yeah. I'll tell you what: if you're looking for a fire pit in St. Louis, you cannot find one. We're trying. To I'm find sure. One in a few days cannot find a fire pit, like because we. We moved and the old one was all beat up and it was rusted in the bottom. We're like, well, let's get a new one at the new house, you know, like not because we moved in the end of July. So well, let's get one next spring. We've been looking everywhere. Lowe's, Home Depot. You're not getting a fire pit. I don't no. know if you like that around the country, but it's toilet paper and fire pits. Can't get I them. guess that's it. That's that's <laughs> the magic. That's the magic things that are gone. So <laughs> dig a hole, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> hey, that works. I mean, as long as you. <laughs> Don't set anything on fire. You're good. So <laughs> well, let's see. Yeah, I don't know. Are, we have a kind of a picky homeowners. Uh, so yeah, if you, probably you know, not. I'm sure they're going to really love. I dig a hole and start <laughs> fire. In the backyard. Can't even have a pool. Anyway, also joining us, we have the co-owner of the Magic for Less Travel, Pam Forrester. And fun fact, I learned before this show where Pam Forrester lives on the outskirts of Pittsburgh. No Taco Bells, no KFCs. That is not heaven, Pam. That is not heaven. I can't believe it. <laughs> I'm telling you, it is heaven without it. I will just <laughs> nice. say, <laughs> we don't need it. We don't need Taco Bell or KFC here. <laughs> we have plenty of other restaurants for much to There's choose. lots of choices. Yes. Plenty, plenty of choices. So I know, Mike, you'd have to find, you'd have to have a new routine. Maybe you'd you go would. to a different Mexican restaurant. Like, 
You know. I do. I, I go to multiple Mexican restaurants, but there's just something about Taco Bell. No. And, you know, I'm not kidding. I'm like Pavlov's dog because on yeah. a road trip, when you're going down the interstate, like I'll see the logo and like I'll just start salivating. I'm like, I need a taco and I'm not even hungry. <laughs> sad. It's really sad, Mike. Yeah. yeah, see, we do. Yeah, we do have permanis, but we have, um, yeah, you'd find plenty to eat here. I'm just saying. Yeah. Yeah. I do like for Manny Brothers because I've had that in Indianapolis. Is that yeah. that's the place that has the fries on the sandwich? And fries it's crazy. on the sandwich, like, oh, yeah. Good, yeah. Yep, Indianapolis Mall. Yeah. All right, well, hey, we'll probably be talking about food a lot. So if you have comments, you're tuned in here live on Facebook. Drop those in the comments because we do need some questions that would help us with tonight's show. Uh, we're leading off the question from the inbox from Morgan. This is an interesting question. I think I have the answer, but I wanted to bounce this off Pam because you booked so many trips in the past. I want to see how how things are going to go with this one. She says. Uh, see, my my fiance and I will be getting into Orlando around midnight on September 20th for our honeymoon. We've already booked the trip starting on September 20th, but since we won't be getting to the room until after midnight, we'd technically be checking in on the 21st in the eyes of Disney. I was thinking originally we need to ask for a late checkout time, but now I'm wondering if we need to adjust and change the check-in date to the 21st since we'll technically be checking in very early on the 21st and um morgan's in bristol uh, bristow virginia and she's curious about that so they're getting there so they're flying down the night of the 20th but not going to get to the resort until say i guess like 1 a.m 21st you would book it to check in on the 20th right though so that you can go yeah otherwise you can your room to be ready right you're gonna yes. play the game at five o'clock right. night <laughs> yes, your room could technically not be ready until three or four o'clock the next day yeah. on the 21st. So if you would like a room to go to, and I'm betting you will because you'll be tired, um, I think you should absolutely keep it on the 20th. And I think that's the smart thing to do because then you'll be able to go ahead once you get there, get to your room. And uh, then you'll be able to settle in and you'll be able to have a room the next day there when you're there all day, when mo when you pro likely won't have one if you're mm -hmm. only checking in on the 21st and go from there. But yeah, absolutely. I would do, I would book it for the 20th arrival. And, but you would tell Disney, right? Just to make sure that they yes. know your, the situation so right. that they know you're not a no-show. Yes. yes. Absolutely. Let the um, let them know that, that you will have a late arrival mm -hmm. and that's perfectly OK with them and they'll hold your room for you and then you'll go on with your vacation. So. And that's the best tip, uh, you know, whenever you're staying at a hotel and you have a late, like really late arrival, just let them know like, hey, we're still coming, you know, we'll be there. It's just, we're going to be, you know, after midnight or whatever, because that has definitely happened to Brian and I a number of times where we've gotten in well after midnight. So it's just nice to just call them and give them a heads up of, Hey, we're just going to be a little late. Don't give away our room because they could potentially do that if the hotel is booked or something like that. So mm -hmm. not saying that that would happen at a Disney hotel necessarily, but you know, just in general that has happened. So just, just kind of keep it in mind. Yeah. You know, too, when I'm, you know, I'm looking back at how we used to go to Disney as opposed to how we do now, you know, of course, everybody has their, their evolution of how their mm -hmm. trips turn out. If you've been a Disney fan for any length of time, you know, we used to always drive. We used to, you know, we'd only stay at pop century or an all-star. Now we've, you know, we, we do split stays. We'll stay at a moderate. Some of the trip we'll stay at a deluxe, maybe one or two nights at the end. Um, but I remember that when we first started going, you know, I would get there at about, uh, you know, we'd leave at about five in the morning. Sometimes a lot of times we left like five in the evening as Mallory was like really little, but sometimes we'd leave like after work, you know, mm -hmm. say five or six and go down. And the thing is a lot of times we'd get there. Well, the, this, I guess it was when we trying to think of the time we'd leave, but anyway, we'd stay off site. Like it's some cheesy little cheap hotel because we get in, say at like eight o'clock at night. And the thing was, so we were thinking, you know, we'd stay at like some hotel on like I-4, like something, something, you know, main gate or something, you know, a cheapy hotel I found on Expedia. And the thing was, I saved a little bit of money by doing that, by not staying at the Disney resort like that, because the way I looked at it was, well, we're getting there eight o'clock or nine o'clock at night. I don't want to pay for that whole day, mm -hmm. you know, and not be there. But what I've learned is you were saving probably 20 or 30 bucks if you were staying at a value to do that offsite shuffle. Then you got to you got to unpack, you know what I'm saying? Like you got to, you got to put your stuff in the cheap hotel on I-4, 
pack it up again in the morning, go over to Pop Century, play the check-in game. You know, you might not get your room for a while where I just learned that it was easier just even if you got in eight, eight or nine o'clock at night, just get that, get that room, get there and you can go in the morning, you're already checked in, you're ready to roll. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just one of those things like it was like I was trying to save just a little bit of money, but it wasn't worth yeah. it. It just yeah. wasn't worth it. I know you always have to. I think that's always a, a challenge for so many people. Like you want to you want to save the money or you want the most value. Um, and sometimes those things aren't sometimes the least expensive is not always the best value. You could save twenty dollars and waste three hours. Do you mm -hmm. know what I mean? And for me, I'll pay twenty dollars to save three hours any day. And yeah. that's the kind of thing I think you have to think about sometimes is the value. So good point. All right. Aaron's got a question here in the chat. Kind of interesting. She says, I know you normally save the deluxe for last, but what if your split stays art of animation suite in wilderness lodge studio downsize second or save the spacious room for mm. last? I have a definite yeah. answer on that one. Yeah. Um, lodge last because of the amenities, the, the location, yeah, I, I do that. You know, I, size is not as important as like the 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 just the opulence of a wilderness lodge to me. Yeah, but I don't know what do you guys what do you think. I mean, what, what would you do? I think I would definitely do wilderness lodge last and art of animation first. I just like you said, based off of the amenities that they have. I mean, it's it's kind of not a no contest idea for me. I would absolutely go with art of animation first. And then yeah, I would too. I can't help it. It's more of the total experience that I'm mm -hmm. thinking of when, and not necessarily just the size of the room, but wilderness lodge is definitely a deluxe resort. You're going to see more restaurants. You're going to see sit down restaurants. They have a lounge, they have a pool bar, they have a, you know, all of these things. And the values do have a pool bar, but it's very different than the pool bar yeah. at, the, at the deluxe resort. A little bit, a little bit. I remember yeah. one time, you know, we rolled up to the the lobby, or we were at the food court at one of the um, value hotels, and we wanted to get a drink. And at one point, Steve looks over and he's like, um, "Nobody's coming to take your order. You <laughs> have to go up there and get your drink, and then bring it back to your seat." And I was like. Oh, like I just wasn't really thinking about it. You know what I mean? <laughs> but yes. So, um, you know, but it's the lobby experience too. Like, don't get me wrong. The lobbies at the value resorts are really entertaining and colorful and, and nice, but you don't see a ton of people just hanging out in the lobby because they love the ambiance, right? No. I mean, well, you could do some prime people watching, I'm sure, because, you know, I think that sometimes during check-in, your family's not always at their best, right? <laughs> so everyone doesn't always love each other and you know that. That. <laughs> so, <Do> that. Survival. <laughs> but in the wilderness lodge, there you're going to see people just hanging out in the lobby because they like the ambiance and the music and oh. everything else going on there. So there's so many pluses for that resort. I think save it to the end. You'll you'll really appreciate it. But in defense of the drop-off bar in Petals, which is Pop Century and Art of Animation <laughs> pool bars, yes, I've seen some raucous people at those bars, and they're I mean, they bars too. I forget <laughs> what they're called, but man, I'm just saying you you can you can rock it at the deluxe resorts, and you can rock it at the values. Man, it's vacation yeah. for everybody, and there are a lot of fun. But you're right. I mean, it's a def it's definitely a different feel. But um, I think that. I've heard actually people are really fans of pedals. Like for some, I don't know, like there's like a fan club for pedals pool bar and I don't know really? what it is. Maybe it's just the decoration. Cause it's just an outside. Yeah, it is. It's not even much more though than like Coronado Springs has a nice outdoor bar right next to their pool. Now they yes. serve some hot food items out of theirs. That's kind of the step up there, but yeah, that, I mean, yeah, it's a shoot summertime sitting outside with a cold drink. <laughs> Who wants to be on vacation? $25 seems fair. Seems <laughs> absolutely fair. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, follow-up question from Dana in the live chat. And I don't think they are, but Ricky might know. Do you know if they're doing the update on the big blue pool at Art of Animation while they're closed? Are they not doing any construction at all right now? No, right now at Disney, they are not doing any construction. Basically, it's it's pretty well stopped um, until they can get 
you know, some social distancing uh, guidelines and stuff in place, I think we're not going to see any construction at Walt Disney World until, you know, they start getting people back in and stuff like that. So unfortunately, uh, all of those things have been pushed back. So all of the, you know, probably all the uh, pool refurbishments um, that had been scheduled. And I, I know there were some that were like listed for a long time. And like they started, they listed them like middle of last year for the end of 2020. And I was like, what is this? Disney's really letting people know that the, you know, pool at <laughs> Pop Century is going to be closed mm -hmm. this far in advance. I thought it was a typo, to be perfectly honest. And then, no, it was not. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's probably just going to push back all of these things because there's just, there's just no one there to work on you know, anything. So, um, you know, just like we've said before, it's going it to obviously will push back, you know, it'll push back Ratatouille when that opens, you know, Rummy's Ratatouille Adventure. It's going to push back Guardians of the Galaxy Coaster. It's going to push back Tron. It's going to push back, you know, the Play Pavilion. It, I mean, it's going to push back everything, um, at least for a little while. So, yeah, unfortunately, sorry. I mean, well the good news though is with you know with a pool refurbishment is no matter what resort you're at you're going to have other options True. so say you're at riverside and the old muddy island or whatever old man, <laughs> old man river island bars of muddy water but you know if that one's down you can go over to the french quarter pool or you know if you're at art of animation big blue pool goes down of course that is the feature pool it's right yeah. there by the finding nemo suites but you could also go down to the cars pool which is very awesome in itself mm -hmm. you could also go to the mermaid pool same thing for you know pop century if the hippity dippity pools down you can go over to the 50s the exactly. bowling pin or the computer from the 80s or the square yeah. computer well, I mean, it's, it's it is okay. The computer pool is kind of late, except for folks like me, because like I just look up at that laptop and it is so awesome. Oh, that laptop, nineties computer, I love and it. It's the nineties like Disney websites. websites. Yeah. It's fantastic. Like, if you've been a Disney fan for a while, yeah. you will recognize the website because it really that's really what it looked like. Oh, totally, like, that's no joke. Yeah. That's it's what it's got it all like. the old URLs and everything on there is. Yes. That's a that's a piece of history, really. It is. So they didn't mean for it to be. I don't. Well, maybe they did. I don't know. That's crazy. You never know. It is. So we'll see. All right. Now this this uh, email came in uh, end of March, so it's a little bit dated, but I think we can have a conversation on it. It's from Justin up in Canada. He says, "Hey there, uh, Justin from Ontario here, and a huge fan of the show. My girlfriend and I have a ten day trip planned, starting May third at Pop Century with some killer dining reservations and fast passes." Unfortunately, though, we're not going to be able to take this trip with the current COVID situation. I was curious what your thoughts are on to do next. We're considering rescheduling for the same time next year. So again, beginning of May, or we're thinking about pushing it all the way back to 2022 in order to allow for more of the coming changes to Walt Disney World to finish up. I'm torn because the 50th anniversary, May 2021, would be a pretty cool experience, but the crowds are going to be nuts due to the anniversary celebrations and we want to avoid crowds as much as possible. If we push it to 2022, this would also be considered a graduation celebration. I'll be graduating from a four-year registered nursing program in 2022. Awesome. What additions do you anticipate being around in May 2022 that would not be around during May 2021? And how do you think crowds will be for both of these two dates? And uh, that's his question. He is in Ontario. Justin. So basically, I think, you know, everything's up in the air, but I mean, we can still kind of guess. So here's my first thought on this. I'll throw it to you guys to kind of finish up. But I would guess with the current situation, Disney's rethinking how to do the 50th because mm -hmm. obviously they're going to be behind now. Maybe they start the, the anniversary on October 1st, 2021. Right. That buys some time and it's actually the official 50th anniversary date. Mm -hmm. And it makes sense and it's a good fallback instead of like January 1st. Mm -hmm. I don't know. So that's what I'm thinking may happen. So, you know, so if they went May 2021, they might beat most of the people. Because I'll tell you what, I mean, this is just me as a travel agent. Pam probably sees this too. In the last week or so, I've been getting a lot of emails from guests that want to book packages to be there at the beginning of October 2021. Now we're almost there because your checkout date has to be within 499 days. As of today's recording, that date is September 29th. Got so it. when the show comes out, it will be October 1st of your checkout. So be the length of your stay and then you can do it. But this is this is a hot date to be there around October, beginning of October 2021. Mm -hmm. And what would you say? Then we'll throw it to Ricky because she can kind of crystal ball it with all the stuff she knows too. It's so hard because I 
I think through everything that being in this COVID situation has taught me, it has made me, I guess, appreciate even more not putting off the things that I want to do. Mm -hmm. um, and that's got, it, it, it is absolutely something that is in, in my brain as I think about things, that I've, as, as I think about things that I want to accomplish and things I want to do. Um, and so I'm reluctant to say that pushing it off is a good idea. I, I just am. Um, you know, who knows what will be going on at that point in time. I, I think I would fit it in, you know, where I could, but there will be changes because of the anniversary. There will be crowds, but like as in other celebrations, you may see an uptick, maybe especially on weekends too, because you have local people and people who are coming in for their vacation, but it's not going to be a constant, mm -hmm. um, you know, high level of crowd just because we're having a celebration. You've, we've seen Disney's crowds increase to some degree, just, you know, gradually increase. And I still feel like I'm able to go to the parks and get things done and enjoy myself. So I try not to let crowds deter me because some of my best vacations have happened during very busy times. You just have to use strategies, employ your knowledge of the, um, of the area to make good decisions about when to go ahead and do the attractions, what to use your fast passes for, and how to use things like the events that happen at night to maybe supplement, you know, like parties if they're available or after hours events or other things like that. Just use all the tools at your advantage and you can still have a fantastic trip regardless of crowds. So agree, especially in May, because yeah. May is yeah. a great, early May is an awesome Absolutely. time. You're not gonna hit the big crowds, I don't think either year in early May. Yeah. And he already said he had killer fast passes in ADR, so he knows how to run things and how to yeah. get things, you know, set up for a good vacation. So I'm, I'm comfortable with either. So Ricky, any th any thoughts on this? Well, I I do think that they will I, now. I that will probably push back the um, celebration on the fiftieth. I know Jennifer says that uh, you know she asked, did I read the celebrations are now pushed back to ten one twenty one instead of starting in January? And really we didn't know if they were going to start in January to begin with. I mean, let, let's be perfectly honest. That was a guess, uh, you know, based off of things. I thought they were probably going to start in May uh, and probably they would be starting May Memorial day weekend, you know, this same weekend, May, 2021. So, I mean, I could have been wrong on that guess too. Um, I do think, you know, of course, if they don't do May, you know, Memorial day weekend next year to start the 50th, I think they will absolutely, obviously, of course, do the official day, which is October 1st, 2021. So, you know, that will, you know, it'll either, I think it'll still either be one of those two weekend, you know, two times. Um, again, I've been wrong before, but I think that those are probably the two most likely times. Um, as far as what we'll see, I think the celebration will last at least 18 months because no, it's Disney. Please. So, I mean, duh. Um, <laughs> <laughs> They're not one to, to skimp on a celebration. Uh, and I think that uh, you're going to see maybe a phased um, introduction of those attractions that are supposed to be there for the 50, if they're the 50th, like Tron, like the play pavilion, um, like, you know, guardians of the galaxy. I think that those might be phased in instead of opening all at once. Like maybe Disney was planning, but again, we'll see, you know, we just don't know based off of where the construction was, where it will be at that time, you know, how much they can ramp up or how much, just there's a lot of unknowns that we don't know. And I don't know that Disney knows at this point. I mean, no, I know they're working on it. I know they have a plan. They have an idea, but of course, goodness knows, they definitely didn't predict no, a no global pandemic. So, you know, that there are things that change things all the time. So, um, you know, I, we can only do our best guess of what we think is going to happen uh, based off the knowledge that we have now. And right now that's kind of how I suspect we'll see things again. I've been wrong before. Uh, <laughs> so I could be wrong on this one, but based off of the things that I've seen in the past, that's kind of where I think we're going. What if Disney's great at marketing? They can sell anything. They can make yeah. it sound really good. What if they, you know, launch some big attraction on October 1st, 2021, right. and then every 50 days? Dude, <laughs> I mean, I don't know if they have enough attractions for that, but well, just, just until they get them all open, you know, 50 well, I, days older than Guardians. Guardians I think that's a great idea, actually. That's, 
should be working. You should be. That's kind of. <laughs> <laughs> they can open like a small. I mean, they could open a small attraction, then yeah. they open a big attraction, well, then they open a small thing, and then they, you know, <laughs> I like that idea. No, it's good. a really good idea. Yeah. All right. All right, ready. I, I wish I had my cowboy head here for this question. Uh oh. I, I wear it all the time when we play cards at the table, but it's it's upstairs in the closet. Anyway, Jennifer's asking, what are the horseback options at Walt Disney World? And have any of you done any? So I have only done one adjacent horse activity. <laughs> it, was the, it was the big wagon ride that we yes. took the lizards at Marathon Weekend. We rented like three wagons at Fort Wilderness because there were so many of us. Now we didn't all go at the same time, we took turns. But you just got on this wagon. I think it held like 25, maybe 20, 25 people. It was awesome. It held a lot of people. It held a lot of people. And I think there were two horses. And it just took us, you know, slowly around Fort Wilderness. The the, the resort loops, we saw all the trailers and the the motor homes and you know, went past trails in, smelled the chicken, uh, <laughs> past Pioneer Hall, all that good stuff. They just try to get you to go buy dinner, which I probably did because I love trails. If I'm close to the trails in, I gotta eat there. But it was a lot of fun and it was relatively inexpensive. I don't say like 20 bucks a person. I mean, because when you get a group, well, because we did a group, yeah. Yeah, exactly. but I mean, yeah, yeah. if you got a group, it wasn't bad. So no, that bad. is the only horse activity I have ever done at Disney. Pam, have you ever mounted a horse at Disney and uh galloped through the, the <laughs> I have not, um, but my mom has, and she actually has horses. So she wanted to do the trail ride when, um, when they were down there at some point, this was a few years back. And so they went to Fort Wilderness and they did the trail ride. Um, and she said it was really, it was run really well. She felt really safe um, that it's something that even beginners can do. They know this, they have horses that have certainly been handpicked that have a really great disposition and aren't inclined to do dumb things that horses do. If you're, if right. you're familiar with horses, but I'll just say when we're at her house and there's like a plastic bag that sort of blows through the field, you would think that, this was a huge, I mean, the horses are hugely alarmed by this. They get all freaked out. If we're as big as they are, they're kind of easily frightened and sort of fragile oh, animals. Yeah, that kind of thing, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they are. They're kind of like, you know, they're freaked about everything. So anyways, but um, you don't have to worry about that when Disney's taking care of that. And then the other thing is that you can do certain resorts have the carriage rides too. Like not just Fort Wilderness, there's like a smaller carriage that only accommodates like four people, mm -hmm. um, not the big wagon. Mm -hmm. So that's the other horse thing too. But yeah. Is, yeah, is I, Fort Wilderness the only place though that you can actually ride horses? I think it is, right? Yeah. Yeah. Because the Tricycle D Ranch. Yeah. Tricycle D. Which, by right. the way, is right. it is a great name. It's being refurbished right now. So just know that, uh, again, another one of those projects that I think was supposed to be for the 50th. Um, so, yeah, just know that uh, the, uh, or, or maybe it was for the, the new reflections, you know, it was tied into that too. But, um, just know that Tricycle D Ranch is currently being refurbished, but the horses and all that are still available. Well, whenever Walt Disney World opens again, uh, will still be available to be seen. So you can still go and see the horses at Tricycle D Ranch too, which is a really cool experience. I did it on one of our early trips, you know, um, to Walt Disney World. So uh, yeah, it's just, it's a really it is. Cool Those experience. horses that they use, the ones you usually see and the stables over there are the ones that they you typically see like in the Magic Kingdom. They're usually a Percheron or a Belgium, which is a really big horse. And when you get to see them at Tricircle D, you get to really appreciate the massiveness yeah. of these horses. They're big. So it's a cool experience. And that's why I love running from Wilderness Lodge. Well, you can't because the pass closed right now. But from Wilderness Lodge to Fort Wilderness, you're running right past Tricircle D. You see the goats. You see the horses. Yes. You got to hold your breath because, I mean, unless you're from the country. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> poop but uh it's pretty it's pretty nice i mean it's, it's yeah and the thing is i i don't know i heard that during the refurbishment though ricky that the horses did demand uh villas over at the polynesian yeah i'm sure they did uh, yeah <laughs> they wanted to use the pool the quiet yeah, place, exactly <laughs> you see a horse go down the volcano pool slide at the polynesian <laughs> 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 visual. oh my god <laughs> you know how they do like the last day at the pool and you're like in your community it's like dog day in the yes pool. that's it's fantastic day. right now oh, like, i should take said, Daisy swimming and well you know <laughs> disney said do they talk to their horses and they said you know what if we're ever closed for a week or more you guys can get in the pool and the horses are like bet let's go <laughs> i'll take those on do it yes 
<laughs> All right. Next question is from Debbie in the live chat. It says, hopefully taking a family trip in December. And of course, now it starts jumping. <laughs> uh, we're staying at Old Key West. What lounges should hubby and I go to for date night? <laughs> Was this question addressed to me? <laughs> um, so it, the odd thing about Old Key West is they don't really have a lounge like no, that. That's true, they don't. Um, so case. Yeah, yeah, I know, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> and it is a fun place, but it's the only place then you can get food is sort of the little um, grab and go yeah. <laughs> that's right yeah. there. And it's, there's not a lot of great options there. Um, not that the gurgling suitcase doesn't have some great drinks because they do, they have a signature drink and a, the name's escaping me right now, but it's really good. So um, see, this question was just for me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so anyways, you know, there's lots of great lounges um, at the world. We were just talking about wilderness lodge. So I'd be remiss if I didn't mention both territory lounge, which is the inside lounge that's sort of, attached there to artist point and then also geyser point which is available as well and they the geyser point is outside so it's sort of open air it looks out over the water it's beautiful the food's good i mean i don't need to sell this too much because now every time i go there there's a wait to get into this lounge so i think all you people Correct. are going to this lounge yep. so anyways now i i <laughs> i'm glad that people like it because i do too there are great lounges though at other resorts too um i think animal kingdom lodge victoria lounge is a great one too it actually sort of overlooks boma so while you're getting your drink and they have some interesting snacks there too you can check that out um, and if you're in the area of the Wilderness Lodge, again, you could take a boat over to the Contemporary. And a little known fact here, the California Girl actually does have sort of a lounge area. And if they're not too busy, you can go up there and grab a drink and or eat. Now, there are absolutely times when it is too busy and you can't go up there because all those spaces in the lounge are either full or being taken up by folks who are waiting for their table to open up in the restaurant. So keep that in mind. But if you can't get in at California Grill, there oh. is also another lounge right there by Chef Mickey's. Mm -hmm. So you could visit yeah. that one too. And the Wave. The Wave's got a cool lounge. Yeah, the Wave yeah. does have a cool lounge. They're the beautiful. only thing about the Wave lounge for me is it's dark. In it there. is very dark. It's, cool. it's, cool. Like it. it's so cool. Down there. I know. And when it's hot outside, it's perfect. Oh, like, that's awesome. But my husband, if it's too dark, he will fall asleep. Yes, <laughs> truly, truly, that is, he that does. Is the hazard of that place, dude. It is so, it's like cool and dark. And if it's been 100 degrees in July and you've been outside, yes. it's like you're you're out before your drink even gets I back. I can't tell you that I'm tired of to touch, Steve. <laughs> yeah, I know for sure. But it is. And the other thing is you can not only do they have sort of a menu there, but you can order off of the full menu that's available at the wave to be served there in the lounge too so that's a great option but really i mean all of them are great and i we didn't even touch on disney springs there's tons of great lounges there too you won't you will not have a shortage of good lounges you will visit. find a lounge I promise. you will find a lounge yeah that's where that's where my family eats most of the time so all right, so we have three questions. We have about 10 minutes. So I want to get these in for the end of the show because they've been hanging. Okay, Philip's got a question here. What tour would you recommend looking for behind the scenes, background stories of different features of the parks? So I'm quickly just going to go with Keys to the Kingdom. That sounds like it's your most general Magic Kingdom introductory tour that kind of whets your appetite. Then you can go other ways and more in depth with certain areas. But Keys to the Kingdom is a good first tour for me. Ricky? I mean, I'm going to go with that seven hour monstrosity tour of the Backstage Magic. I mean, I think that that for a Disney fan is the ultimate. So um, there's so many different things that you can do on that tour that are unusual that you can't do anywhere else. So um, that's the one I'm going with. It's my bucket list tour, actually. Okay. Someday, someday I'll get there. But yeah, it's yeah. my bucket list. I'll do it on a solo trip, I think, because I'll be yeah. So, yeah, good idea. Yeah. All right, Pam, what about you? I'm thinking if you like animals, and I know this is not the parks, but anything that you can do over at the Animal Kingdom Lodge is really immersive and incredible. Like you'll have opportunities to do things that you won't have 
many opportunities to do outside of like a wildlife preserve or something like that. In particular, they have what's called a Waniyama Safari, which includes going out on the safari there at Animal Kingdom and then also having dinner at Jico. So it combines two things that are awesome. Can't beat that. Agreed. And you, all three of those would be great options. Great. You know, it's, what's sad is, is there's not that many. I mean, there's not that many tours really that take you to Hollywood Studios though, at this point. Like no. that's kind of the, you know, the bummer is all the other parks have really good tours, I feel like. And then ho poor Hollywood Studios is like, hi, we're over here. <laughs> I did that world showcase on discovery at Epcot and it was just me and a, and another couple that was like from yeah. like uh, Asia and they didn't speak English. And it was really, cause there's only three of us. And it was super interesting. I mean, it was yeah. like a private tour basically for like four hours. That's awesome. Uh, let's see. Stephanie's got a question, question about dining at Hollywood studios. Just talking about the studios. We're spending two days at Hollywood studios, but we aren't thrilled about dining there. We have the dining plan. Do you recommend a great table service at Hollywood Studios or should we go to the Boardwalk area or Epcot for ADRs on our Hollywood Studios days? Two boys, 11 and nine, if that matters. So here's what I say on that one real quick. So if you're looking for table service, now I think the, I think the studios does fine on table service. I think where the struggle is, is counter even though I can eat Ronto wraps like they're going out of business nowadays. So I'm not <laughs> too worried as much as I used to be. Give me a breakfast Ronto wrap and a regular Ronto wrap the rest of the day. It's like my Taco Bell. Anyway, so 11 and nine, that's interesting. And boys, because I think they would really enjoy 50s prime time sci-fi. I think I those too. Both great options, and you're not wasting so much time leaving the studio. So, Ricky, you kind of agree with that? Those were exactly the two I was going to suggest for those ages. I think they are perfect. I think the food, I, I like the food at 50s primetime. So, I mean, there's that. And then, you know, I know that, I know that sometimes sci fi gets the, a knock on their food, but you have the, the really cool experience of, you know, the drive in, you know, being in the cars and, and dining and things like that. For that, I think is is killer. So, um, you know, I th those are definitely the two that I would suggest and was thinking of right off the bat anyway. So, anything yeah. outside the box, Pam, as far as like hopping out to because I would I don't know if I'd go all the way to Epcot, maybe boardwalk one of the two days or something. What are you thinking? So, you also have the ability to go ahead and take the Skyliner over to that International Gateway area, and Ale and Compass is there. And I think the food at Ale and Compass is outstanding. True. So, just a good choice there if you're looking for another table service to use that. But I think the two that Mike and Ricky both talked about were, were good choices too, for sure. All right, last question of the day. Haley Joe says, we're hopefully doing a quick trip for my birthday in August and doing Mickey's not so scary Halloween party. Any quick service that is a that is special you would recommend? So obviously we're looking quick service at Magic Kingdom. Yes. So there's just one tiny little problem. And that's the fact that if you're gonna be doing a uh, quick service, for Mickey's not so scary. A lot of the restaurants close. Uh, cl they close early because they use those locations for, um, you know, for the, uh, the the actual treat giveaways. So you're actually very limited on the places that you can go to. Um, that's going to be the toughest part. I mean, usually. Cosmic Rays is going to be open. Um, and I mean, it's good. It's special in the fact that you have, you know, sunny eclipse there. Uh, so that's an option. I'm going to suggest if you really, because it's so limited, I would suggest heading over to, you know, one of the, the Polynesian or the Contemporary or the Grand Floridian and grabbing a bite there. Now, for me, it would be Captain Cook's Same. at the Polynesian. That's my favorite. I mean, hands down, I've literally left the Magic Kingdom to go eat at Captain Cook's because I was craving Captain Cook's. So um, I crave those pork nachos all the time. Uh, so that's kind of where I am in life. Uh, but yeah, I would definitely consider if, if, because there's really just nothing special that's open, you know, for Mickey's not so scary Halloween party. I mean, they don't have themed, di you know, dinners or, you know, for counter service meals, which is unfortunate. Uh, they have lots of themed snacks, so you could fill up on snacks <laughs> real good there, <laughs> Yeah. but I don't think you're going to be able to fill up, you know, if you're looking for a dinner option, uh, I would, I would maybe go somewhere nearby, but not, you know, yep. there. So my cool. rule for the for the Halloween and the Christmas party is eat like at four o'clock before you, yes. you don't want to waste your time eating during one of those parties. There's too much fun stuff going on. And it is. It, uh, Laura's asking, is Columbia Harbor House open? Sometimes it's not during the hard time. Right. Exactly. Because I, I like that place and it's been closed. 
Christmas. Well, and the last time, so Brian and I were there, I don't remember if it was for the Halloween party or if it was for the Christmas party, but we did go over to the Grand Floridian and we actually ate a, like a table service meal. We ate at the Grand Floridian cafe. Again, it was just simple, easy. We were able to walk in because it was, you know, we didn't have an ADR, but it was early enough that they just allowed us to sit down. So, you know, that's an option too, is to see if, you know, one of those table service options there is available if you really want something special. So, like and like you, at Kona at, at you know the Polynesian or something yeah, you totally. probably able to walk in at yeah. Well, and Pam, you talked about the Grand Floridian Cafe for years. I'd never been there. Scott Gardner is a big fan of it. He took me there after a couple of races uh, over the past few years. You know, if we'd have a breakfast there, that place is really good. The really. breakfast is it's a, sort of like a brunchy menu for mm-hmm. breakfast, and that's what I really like about it. So. All righty. Well, that's going to do it for today's show. Thank you for the great questions. We love hanging out with you live here on Facebook. So join us next Monday around 545 Eastern. Drop your question in or send your question even better to Mike at BeOurGuestPodcast.com. We're getting a little low on the inbox with all the current uh, situation that's going on. So drop your question in, Mike at BeOurGuestPodcast.com. Don't forget today's show brought to you by our friends over at the Magic for Less Travel. Right now is the time to plan either a late 2020 trip or we can do basic packages for 2021. So I'm just telling you, this is my personal opinion on this. This is my mental health. I have to have something on the calendar officially locked in. It may happen. It may not. But I need to know that I have something to look forward to. I have a countdown officially rolling on my iPhone. It's just kind of nice to have that to look forward to. And things are turning around. I mean, we're making progress here in our country and around the world. Things are we're getting there. It's slowly getting there. And, uh, you know, as of the time this show releases, Disney Springs is back open um, today as the show releases. So we're crossing our fingers there. We're going to learn some stuff down there and hopefully we'll be back to the theme parks and resorts very, very soon. So when it comes time for that next Disney trip, whether it's Walt Disney World, Disneyland, Disney Cruise Line, even Adventures by Disney. And let me tell you, Adventures by Disney just announced a killer Japan adventure for 2021. I booked a guest on that. that I looked at that. And I'm like, oh, can I please go with you? Because that looks amazing. <laughs> <laughs> like if you want to go. And also speaking of adventures by Disney, drop by the Magic for Less web, uh, YouTube channel. Go to YouTube.com. Search the Magic for Less. There's a great video on what Adventures by Disney truly is all about. It's about the experiences. It's about the people you travel with. It's about the multiple guides that take you to to exclusive places you wouldn't reach otherwise. There's just so much great Disney. We're in a pause period right now, but we're going to come out of this, and you're going to want to have a good time. And the folks at the Magic for Less are going to take great care of you. So check them out today. Let them know you heard about them here on the show, themagicforless.com. Please use our Amazon affiliate link, beourguestpodcast.com slash Amazon. You get all your prime benefits, cost you nothing extra, and every purchase helps everything we do here on the show. So please bookmark it and use it as often as you can, beourguestpodcast.com slash Amazon. Give us a follow on the social media. I want to talk to you this week at be our guest pod and at be our guest Mike, both Instagram and Twitter. And of course, facebook.com slash be our guest podcast. will be right there with you. And we do these live shows, these calling shows now during quarantine every Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday nights. Holy cow, five nights a week, eight o'clock Eastern, seven o'clock Central. Give us a call. It's like the old talk radio days when it, St. Louis used to be Jim White, but when I was a kid, the big bumper from the dimly lit studios on 1120 Camel X. Ricky, did you ever listen to the big bumper in St. No. Louis? No, I did not. Yeah. Sorry. Um, Sorry. Anyway, we're going to be back again on Friday with a topical discussion. We're going to talk about how things may look different attraction to attraction at Walt Disney World on your next trip. We're starting, obviously, with the Magic Kingdom. So we'd love to have some comments on that over the weekend, but we're going to talk about it here on the show on Friday. So until then, for Ricky and Pam, I'm Mike wishing you a great Wednesday. Time to head back to work. Stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll see you real soon. You got that right, Alan. I got to have something on the calendar. I bet you Alan's got a marathon. Alan is perfect marathon for Walt Disney World. Andy ran the only one at Disneyland, too. Wow. That's yeah. awesome. Tell me about it. That's fantastic. I'm, I'm hoping I don't lose power because uh, it's it's pouring like crazy here right now. I mean, lightning and thunder. So cool. <laughs> I heard the thunder go off and I looked at my I looked outside the window. And I'm like, oh, hey, that's not good. <laughs> I closed my blinds. Huh? No, no, it's just like it's it's just uh chilly and cloudy. And oh, like, it's warm here. I wish. Mm-hmm. Thanks, Karen. Do, 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 do. Saving, saving, saving. Okay, we're saved. Okay, let's do the next show. Here we go. Let's do this. Here we go now. Here we go now. Here we go now. Here we go. What, what song is that? Do do 
do do do do do do do do oh what song is that it's it's dang it it goes i'm gonna make you lose your mind up in here here. is that what you're going with yeah probably i I don't know oh well either way i appreciate alan likes the extra shows we have a good time with that it's a lot of i've I've had so much fun with that all right here we go all right and Somebody was banging on the floor during that last show. I had to text them during the middle of the show. So I apologize if you heard like banging. I didn't hear banging. You're good. Where like they start construction projects. Like the only time (laughs) I'm on the air. Like I told them I'm going to get one of those lights. Like at a radio station upstairs says the mic is open. Mic is open. But they would they probably just get out the power saw then, you know? Yeah, of course. All the DMX. (laughs) That's right. That is. That is DMX. Holy cow! Wow. That's so it. Look at this. Oh, everybody's on it. Look. We should I play. love it. Oh, party up. I don't think there. we should play that on this. Let's not do that. Up in here. Yeah, that's definitely not not uh no, uh, rated. It's not, uh, for, <laughs> safe for work or whatever. It's, yes, it's that's definitely work. not safe for work. Yes. <laughs> yeah, okay, here we go. Yeah. Oh, good lord, sixty seventy five. I mean, I love the song, but it's not safe for work, so <laughs> okay, yeah. Okay, here we go. Welcome to episode 1675 of the Be Our Guest Walt Disney World Trip Planning Podcast. I'm your host, Mike Rallman from BeOurGuestPodcast.com and one of the senior agents over at the Magic for Lust Travel. Happy Friday to you. Inching our way towards the unofficial start to summer. We're getting closer each and every day. And, uh, you know, we're making it. We're going to have fun talking Disney today, talking about some of our future trips, what we think might happen. We don't have any real official word right now, but we're just going to uh, just kind of guess and, and have the discussions as to what things might look like on our next Disney trip. It's so actually joining- guessing is kind of like what we used to do before this even happened. I know, like well, people would ask us questions and we'd just kind of be like, oh, uh, uh, when does face to 20 open? I don't know. Stop asking me the question. Yeah, no. At this point, it's not going to We open. don't know. Yeah, Nothing has changed 20. really for uh, us. Dude, at this point, let's be perfectly honest. When do we think Space 220 is going to open? And, like, seriously, it will be, my guess is it'll be a whole year after it was supposed to originally open. No. (laughs) So I I ruined Mike's nice intro. I I just realized. I yeah. wanted to be transparent here because let's not act like we didn't guess before all this. <laughs> That's true. See, back in the pre-quarantine days, I would have cried because I only get to do the podcast twice a week. I record the two shows on Mondays. I do the trip reports on Wednesdays. I do this every night of the week now, so it's fine. You can walk on my intro. That's I'll do fine. another one tomorrow. We're good. <laughs> anyway, so I had something I was going to say, but I totally forgot what it was. So anyway. I got nothing. How I'm about introducing the, actually the two of us now? I'm yeah. up in here. So anyway. <laughs> We have Ricky from touringplans.com and the mouse for less. Happy Friday, Ricky. What's up? Happy Friday. And, you know, I forgot to mention this uh, earlier uh, in the week, uh, but Monday was the anniversary of Brian and my engagement at Walt Disney World. We went on our first ever trip together 15 years ago this week. Holy cow. (laughs) 15 years ago was our first trip together. Uh, that's just insane. So, so did, did Goofy send you a like a uh, card or something saying, remember the day we all hung out together at Chef Mickey's? It was you, Brian, and Goofy. Yeah, exactly. No, no cards, no letters, no, no extra love. But uh <laughs> Get a free meal at um like at Chef Mickey's or something. Dude, I don't. We did not get a free meal or any. We got a, a cupcake. I got a cupcake and we did get champagne, which was nice. Uh, but yes, uh, we got a cupcake and champagne. So no free meal for us. Just cupcake, cupcake and, sh- and champagne. Actual retail value ten bucks. <laughs> meal at Chef Mickey's for two people two hundred and ninety three dollars. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, but yeah, I I quit, I can't believe my like Disney journey technically. It started a little obviously before that, but like really with the one with Brian started 15 years ago, which is which is insane to me. So yeah. you crazy kids, I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's so sick. <laughs> All right. Also joining us, we have the co-owner of the Magic for Less Travel, Pam Forrester. Happy Friday, Pam. 
Happy Friday. I'm, I'm so glad it's Friday and a holiday weekend, my friend. Yes. In case you missed it, because, you know, things kind of blur together. Day? Is it really? Memorial yes, Day? Memorial Day is on Monday. <laughs> I know. No, literally, I Why woke up we today. About Memorial Day on Wednesday. Yeah. Yeah. On Wednesday's episode. Yeah. That's okay. True. Yeah. <laughs> I woke up this morning and I literally thought it was Sunday. Like I had a whole list of stuff that I was going to do because it was Sunday. Nope. And then Steve's like, do you want to do this? And I'm like, no, like I have all these things I want to do. And he's like, um, I hate to tell you this, but today's Monday. And I was oh. like, but I know here it's Friday. So yes. <laughs> if, like if one thing doesn't screw me up, another <laughs> thing will. I know for real. It's Friday on a Monday and whatever. <laughs> whatever. So, anyways, but yes. So yes. weirdness, but weirdness. you know, we're making it through. Yes. So well, first of all, I'm glad you reminded me of that so that I don't forget to put uh, Fresh Prince Summertime in the intro because that's my <laughs> that is so much summertime. Time. I love that song. I love <laughs> that song. That song. <laughs> I'd have been so mad if I'd have missed Is that, that on the Yacht Rock? No, uh, it should be. That's not Yachty. No, it's, it's 90s not. on nine. But, um, I, you know, I, I don't know. Like this this Memorial Day weekend, I mean, I guess you socially distance grill out, right? You don't go to the pool. Uh, some no. pools are opening, though, I heard. Yeah, I, some I heard are. It. I mean, I, I heard you're fine in the water. I would think, I, like, yeah. Watch grabbing rails and, so, and social distancing is pretty tough in a pool, I guess. But, because they said, you know, you're. I heard a doctor say you're totally fine in chlorinated water. I'm thinking, well, why don't we just all like live our lives in a pool? <laughs> <and> chlorinated <laughs> pools. <laughs> I mean, you you're fine from coronavirus. You're probably not fine from other things that we're just not going to talk about. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Ever, I'm not even going there. Let's go no, the to regular stuff. pool stuff. That's the right. regular pool stuff, exactly. We can talk about another. The stuff um, that chlorine is supposed to kill. <laughs> we can talk about another '90s reference, which is the Tootsie Roll. <laughs> but we're not <laughs> I've actually yes. full of pop century clothes because of that dance. I think I love to go to today's topic. I'm sorry for having breakfast. Um, um, it was a baby Ruth, so it was exactly. Oh god, <laughs> so gross. Okay, so we are getting into you. Sorry, it's 1500 shows, people. We try. Oh, no. Today's topic, and we want to have this discussion tonight in the call-in show. So think about it. Stew on it all day today. Give us a call tonight, eight o'clock Eastern, seven o'clock Central. facebookcom slash guest podcast. We're going to talk about. We're going to break down the theme parks and we're going to also do the resorts. But today we're starting with the theme parks. We're starting with the Magic Kingdom. So from park arrival, and we're going to kind of do a quick virtual walk around the park. We're going to miss some things. There's a lot of stuff going on at the Magic Kingdom. But we're going to hit some major things. What might look different? And this show was actually instigated. And he's actually a big instigator anyway by my buddy Joe Laszlo down in Atlanta. During one of our call-in shows last week, he just dropped the question in while we were having some kind of crazy discussion during a call-in show. He's like, what's going to be up with the stretching room? And I'm like, no context. He just dropped that in the comments of the chat. And I'm like, well, what do you mean? What's going to be up with the stretching room? He's like, is it going to go away? I'm like, what are you talking about? What do you mean the stretching room is going to go away? And then I started thinking about it because he was he was like trying to realize, like, what is the Magic Kingdom going to look like upon reentry? And I'm thinking, you know, man, stretching rooms, a vital part of the experience. But then I got to thinking, you know, what do they do? They put a bunch of people in the stretching room, cram you in there. And then what do they and they tell you to get in close to each yeah. other. <laughs> For the love of God. I mean, like we didn't think about this three months ago, but it's like, you know, you have six inches between you and the neighbor from that. You don't know from the other not side even. of the country or the world. <laughs> You're not touching jammed together in the middle of the room, you know? So yeah, that got me thinking about this show topic that, they might have to skip the stretching room for a, for a period of time. Of course, things are going to get back to normal eventually, but we're going to kind of go through like just some of the attractions. Some of them are common sense shows and stuff. will spread you out, you know, the block off some seats, some rows, I would imagine. But for just some of the attractions, we'll kind of have this discussion where we think things might look a little different for, for a slight period of time. So that's the first part. Stretching room, I think, may go away at the Haunted Mansion. But let's go back to the beginning of the park. So obviously, Pam, let me ask you about this. Going through the touch points, I would imagine that they don't use the fingerprints or they do and they maybe wipe it down every time because obviously we're going to have, you know, temperatures and all that first. But let's just get past that going into the park. What do you think? Yeah, I think we'll see some changes there at the entrance, but I think it's really challenging to even wrap your head around what that will look like at this point. You know, the touch points people get fairly close to each other. I imagine we'll probably see a reduction in the number of touch points just to keep them, 
you know, distance. Right now we're sort of, when you go in, there's sort of a V-shaped, you know, yep. different touch points. And some of them are going to be closer, you know, than, than they probably would want to see. So maybe they'll do every other mm -hmm. at that point. Um, I'm not sure. That may look different. Um, they, they may wipe down afterwards and and do that but i think yeah. the entrance will, will be kind of challenging in that space really because it does i mean think about it in the morning they're gonna have to somehow yeah. reduce that yeah, yeah. yeah. everybody where they to enter in. and we gotta yes. get that. as americans that's gonna be tough i mean i'm just i'm not rude but i'm also i don't want to just keep waiting and waiting i want to like you know i don't like run grandma over to get in there but you know I'll run over aunt sally no just kidding i won't do that <laughs> You know, I want to get in there, and I think. And America we've been there when it's been packed too. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, packed that that entryway is packed full of people, um, so that'll be interesting to see. You know, once you get, a, you know, well, you're probably not gonna be able to take the monorail. I don't know what you're gonna do at that point, but, um, you know, I mean, you're gonna be literally just packed in there with that. I, I don't know what they're gonna do because there have been definitely been times when I've been packed in there with everybody. You know, so just waiting to get to the touch points. Yeah, there may be like a, a time that you can arrive, you may have to reserve that, that may be what that looks like, especially if you're coming at different times, like they may have, you know, high um, yeah. peak times. There are times when it's definitely a lot more crowded than other times. So oh, yeah. that may be something that they're looking at. They may be looking at finding ways to disperse, that, disperse the crowd. But yeah, I think that the entrance will look really different for a while. Mm -hmm. I agree. Okay. So let's go down main street USA. And the first thing I can think of in the main street area, two things, shopping and character meet and greets. And I would imagine maybe for just a slight period that we don't have character meet and greets, uh, possibly cause Shanghai didn't opportunities probably to do like selfies from a distance with characters in the background. Mm -hmm. They said they didn't do parades at Shanghai, but they did this like, uh, to me, it kind of seemed like the rainy day cavalcade kind of thing, mm -hmm. like a really short, like, you know, a couple of characters on a few floats, just kind of stopping mm -hmm. everybody having a picture from a distance. I think that's important because people do want to share memories, take those memories. So I'm thinking that um, any thoughts on that, Pam, as far as shopping and character meet and greets for like the Main Street area? So they'll probably be limiting the number of guests that can come into a, a store and they may have a specific designated entrance and then exit to kind of help keep the flow going a certain way. And if when you have a bunch of en entrances, it's harder to keep track of how many people are yeah. actually in the store. So I can see them doing something like that. Their challenge really is though, that uh, at least for a big part of main street, so many of their stores are sort of connected. It's yep. one yep. right yep. after the other. So I keep wondering if that will change a little bit or they'll treat it as one store and go from there. And the thing that makes it hard too is at the end of all these connected stores is Casey's um, yes, so true. that you can walk right into too. So that causes, that will be some challenges, but I'm sure that they'll figure out a way to deal with that for sure. Mm -hmm. And think about what Casey's looks like on a typical day. I mean, oh. it's jammed in there. And it it's is. It's good. But I mean, again, it's all going to be limited because we're not going to sell as many tickets. Not gonna, you know, you're not going to have that crowd. But I mean, I've also heard that their technical numbers, they can still have quite a few people in the Magic King. Because the bottom line is you got to remember this. We're Disney fans. We want to be there under ideal conditions. But Disney is a business and they're going to want to. They're not going to open these parks until they can churn a profit. They're not going to do this. For a loss. You know, they're not going to do it for 12 people in the park. It's just not going to be mm -hmm. possible. So there is going to have to be a balance and it's going to be a tough balance. We'll see what it goes. That's why we're talking about this. So before we leave main street real quick, cause we, you know, we got to kind of go through these quickly and we'll just have kind of a cursor cursory look at these things. But Ricky, what do you think about those two things? So I think that maybe they would probably get rid of the shelving that they have in the shops because, you know, sometimes it's, it's kind of confined. Um, so I know that it's hard to say that Disney will get rid of merchandise, but I think that to, you know, kind of open things up a little bit, they might. Um, I also think you're right. Character meet and greets are going to be incredibly different for a while. Um, if they have them, I think you're right. It might be like that selfie idea, um, you know, where you stand, you stand here, character stands way far away, and then you get the selfie with them. I mean, that's pretty much all I can think at this point, what they might be able to do with that. Um, you know, shops of, you know, heading into, I think what they'll probably do with the shops going back to that is I think that they're probably going to say, this is the entrance, like maybe at the end, like the two ends and then, you know, anything else 
in the middle would be exits and you can only go out. I don't know. That might be an option. Um, so, but they're definitely going to have to reconfigure how people get around um, those, those two areas for sure. And, and I, you know, I know that they've been working on it with Shanghai. So it's, it, this is not, like it will be new to them, which is kind of nice because they will take what they've learned from Shanghai and move it over to the States and maybe tweak things that, you know, don't necessarily translate well or, you know, whatever. But I think that, that they will obviously use what they're doing in Shanghai as a template for what will work for, you know, Walt Disney World and eventually Disneyland whenever that can open, <laughs> whenever they can officially open, you know, in California. But yeah. And, you know, and, and our listeners and folks that are, you know, the big Disney fans, we don't have to worry about this. We're going to treat the cast members with ultimate Absolutely. respect because they bring the magic to us. But I mean, everybody's going to have to be patient with these cast members. They're going to be retrained and they're going to be asking people to do things that are out of the norm. Absolutely. You know, like, they're going to be blocking off entrances where you're like, I've gone in that thing for you know 20 yeah. years. That's how we go in. You know, that's what we do, but we just got to be flexible. So kind of mm -hmm. interesting. All right, let's go uh, left. Let's go to Adventureland. So I think a lot of these attractions will be, you know, pretty simple to figure out pirates, probably every other row, you know, the, the just not as many people on per boat, which I think is fine. Uh, same for the carpets. Um, Tiki room is a show just spread out six feet apart, you know, each group. Mm -hmm. um, throughout the theater. I think those will be fine. Jungle Cruise, Pam, you know, you, at certain points you kind of sit face to face. So just maybe I know. like they put marks in the kind of like seat boxes kind of thing and nobody sitting in the middle possibly. It's hard though, because think about it. Like if you were a family of like, let's say five or six, or uh, as opposed to a family of like two, you know what I mean? The family of five or six can sit together, but the family of two, you know what I mean? is going to take up a lot less room. So the marks aren't really going to help. True. Um, I think that they're going to have to take it like individually. Yeah. I think that in certain spaces, maybe you'll be far enough apart, or maybe this is one that just doesn't open up at the beginning. You know, when we first have an opportunity to go back into the park, it's just really challenging and when there are rides like Aladdin, you know, where you will be able to social, social, be socially distant, fairly easy. Mm -hmm. The cars sort of make that possible. Just don't sit mm -hmm. more than one party in a car. That's an attraction that'll be easy to do, but this one will be more challenging. And I think we won't see all of the attractions open up at the beginning. Mm -hmm. The Jungle Cruise is going to be a challenging one. And that and your you're touching the handle to get into the boat. Mm -hmm. You're touching it to get out of the boat. It's or you're touching the cast member's hand. That's yeah. True. The only thing is, is I can see them wanting to open Jungle Cruise up because they have the movie that's supposed to be coming out. This, it, I think it's still supposed to be coming out in July. So as of right now, I mean, of course I could still change, but you know, that would, I'm sure they would want to tie that in, you know, although thank goodness, maybe because this happened, we aren't going to get the Jungle Cruise retheme of, <laughs> of the attraction, which kind of makes me happy. So <laughs> not that we knew anything about it, but you know, I, I do love the original Jungle Cruise the way it is. So yeah, this is one, like you mentioned, the cast members are helping guests get in and out yeah. of the, the vehicle very intimately, you know, more than like a, like a haunted mansion, you know, they yeah. the buggy, you get in. Mm -hmm but also the cast member is riding on the vehicle the entire time with the guests. I mean, so you'd have to, you know, scoot back. Yeah. That, that one's going to have some operational challenges, but this whole thing is, and here's how we got to kind of shift our, you know, I love Lantesta because he talks about efficiencies and how to see things as, you know, we've all gotten into that habit of like, we want to see Walt Disney world run very efficiently, but in this interim weird time that we're going to be in here for a little bit, we're going to see a lot of inefficiencies. Yes. You just got to be cool with that. You know, like it's going to look very inefficient, but it's going to be a lot more safe at the same time. No, absolutely. I mean, you're definitely going to see ride vehicles go out with le way less people than they normally would. Um, you're going to see rows get skipped. Um, you're going to see probably wait times be a little longer because they have to take the time to maybe clean the vehicle after each time the people get out of it i mean those are things that are going to have to happen um as we move forward with this so um i definitely think wait times are going to go up you know granted I, I, look I, I don't think there'll be as many people obviously in the park necessarily as we would normally see but you're still going to probably be just because there's less people you're still probably going to be waiting about the same amount of time or longer for the same attraction even though there's less people in the park i think at this point 
Okay, so let's uh, move to Frontierland. Let's hit the two headliners over there. Obviously, a big uh, the Country Bears just you know either not open it or just spread people way out. Cause that's kind of a small theater. But when we're talking the two big ones, Big Thunder and Splash, Pam, how would you think you handle that? Splash maybe just one traveling party per log. But yeah, like I think depending on how many, maybe there'll be like a minimum number of rows in between each, you know, party, depending on what happens or one party per log. Um, and I think you're going to see kind of the same thing at Big Thunder, a minimum number of rows in between each party. Um, you know, uh, <laughs> the, the cues are always going to be challenging, but... I think that they'll they'll just work with the 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 line thing. I don't know what else they'll do there. Mm -hmm. And I've heard that they put little markers kind of on the rails, you know, they to kind of your visual indicator, mm -hmm. like you, in like, Shanghai. Point, yeah, they did point to point to point. Like when the next one opens up, okay, you move to that next slot, then you move to that next slot, which is again. It's going to be a struggle, especially, and I mean, I'm not calling out Americans. I love our country. We're the, to me, we're the greatest country in the world. But the thing is, we are not used to these kind of things, and especially people that are not from like urban areas. You know, I'm not mm -hmm. from like a place where I'm, uh, you know, do mass transit or I'm with large groups a lot, you know? So and I think we got to be patient with our fellow guests. You know, somebody may be violating somebody's social distance. It doesn't mean they're trying to be a jerk. Maybe it's just that they weren't thinking about it that time. So I think, you know, even though you're, you're heightened, you have heightened awareness to your health. And that is super important. Don't drop somebody and drill them in the nose because they get a little too close. Just ask them politely because it could be me, you know, because, you know, I, I, I'm at Disney, I'm on vacation. I'm used to just having fun and goofing off. I mean, I'm a big kid when I'm there, I'm never going to try to put anybody in danger, but I mean, I could, I could totally see myself accidentally, you know, getting within six feet of somebody just because it slipped my mind for a second. Um, yeah, I walked down the wrong way of the grocery store because it's the grocery store I go to all the time, have been there a hundred times, wasn't even thinking, just going to grab something. And it's just like a little thing on the floor, like at the beginning of the aisle. And I was walking halfway down to grab something. And then the woman who worked there said, you're going the wrong way down this aisle. And I was like, oh my gosh, like I just, it totally slipped my mind. So yeah. <laughs> It happens. I mean, you know, we're all going to be in situations like that for sure. And then you got tased. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's right. <laughs> uh, Ricky, any final thoughts for uh, Frontierland? We're just going to hop around here real quick. Yeah, I think that they're just going to, um, you know, section off rows. You know, this family goes in this row. Okay, now we need to have this many, you know, seats empty. And then this family goes in this row. You know, I think that's kind of how they're going to do it with those attractions. Yeah. All right, Liberty Square, not a whole lot going on there. Haunted Mansion, other than, you know, we talked about the stretching room, that may be uh, skipped somehow for just <laughs> actually get us pass through. Um, you could do that. And the Doom Buggies are kind of socially distanced, uh, built in. Yeah. So that'd be nice. Yeah. Uh, that would actually be an attraction that could, could be fine. Pretty much. I mean, they tell you, okay, get in this, you know, Doom Buggy now, get in this Doom Buggy now. So it's, it's possible. Um, that one will work out. I think the big bummer is, of course, you, you were right. They won't do the stretching room, which, you know, there's definitely that story that's there. Um, but I, I kind of feel like, and I may be wrong in this, but I feel like anybody who's going to go to Walt Disney World right now is probably already been there before. I'm just Most, like, I would say 70%. Correct. So, you know, at this point, you know, while it kind of stinks for those of us who love the stretching room, I don't think the general fan is going to miss the stretching room at that point. Like, you know what I'm like saying? Like we'll miss it because it won't be there, but they won't miss that part of the story. It won't, it Played won't be in lacking head. in them. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Um, but you know, I think that for the time being, the next, you know, few months, year, or whatever or so, I think that the majority of people who are going to feel comfortable going to Walt Disney World are going to be us Uber fans anyway. <laughs> Possibly. Possibly. I mean, it'll be interesting to see. I don't know that for sure, but maybe. I, just don't, I don't know that generally, uh, you know, random people are going to be like, you know what, let's take that, that, you know, lifelong dream trip to disney world right now but i could be definitely wrong i mean people may think that it's the perfect time to go right now yeah i mean it, it is going to be interesting to see because i don't know that for sure i would guess I, no i don't think any of us know that for sure so yeah, yeah, yeah. all right so obviously hall presidents spread out um they yeah. could do that fine liberty bell boat maybe yeah, yeah. yeah i think you could spare a little bit it's a big thing 
Uh, Tom Sawyer Island, I would say, is a goner for a little while. Not that oh, many people yeah. go over the raft. Oh, yeah. Tight. The tunnels are tight. I would, you're probably not going to get over Tom Sawyer Island. People are touching things over there. Yeah, I, I don't think. Tom Sawyer Island. I anyway. love Tom Sawyer Island. I don't think people are going. Oh, I don't think it's going to be open. No, no. All right, Pam, here's the big one. We're moving to Fantasyland. What are you thinking cool. about the big things there? What, what, what works, what doesn't, in your opinion? So Voyage of the Little Mermaid, I think you're going to be okay because of the vehicles. Um, Belle's story time will be Ooh. very challenging oh, yeah. in that oh, man, yeah. it's small when you first walk in there. And then after that, if you avoided that first part, you'd probably be able to do some social distancing because there, there are some spaces there. There will just have to be less people there seven dwarfs is going to be like the other coasters that we talked about thankfully we'll have a minimum number of rows or whatever um in between different parties um let's see some of the uh, like winnie the pooh same thing if you have ride vehicles that yeah, you know and winnie the pooh i think yes yeah you'll be okay the issue. The issue. Ooh, peter pan might be the issue Cause it's it's constantly moving, and I don't know how they they got to clean they got to clean each vehicle. That's gonna be tough. True. They, maybe they have to stop. I don't know how you would stop it. That's you true. can't stop it. Yeah. Oh, that no. one might be tough. That one might be tough. I've never seen the Peter Pan movie. I might just have to watch it tonight. You've never seen Peter Pan? <laughs> no. Oh, wow. it's, it's, it's a good one. <laughs> oh look, I'm in the per I'm in the the <laughs> oh, time when my oh, lighting no, is so good, right. right? Shining off the Taco Bell sign, uh, two exits down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so um i'm trying to think what else though i think the other issues we have in fantasy land is there's just oh, so yeah. many people a still lot congested time, so i mean that section between peter pan and, and it's a small world is just already tight and yeah i mean we've seen it on not necessarily busy days and it's you know ridiculously tight so and yeah. we've definitely been there on busy days and it's tight so Eek. yeah yeah it's one of those things you know obviously they're gonna limit capacity so they have to do that for for situations exactly like that and i just imagine there's gonna be a lot of cast members out there in fantasy oh. and just really encouraging people to you know it, it's kind of like the ultimate um right before happily ever after in front of the plaza and casey's you know like you gotta keep moving you can't stop here you can't yeah. Congregate. I mean, in the sense where it's going to be, I, I feel for those cast members that is not going to be a great job to have in August. Yeah. yeah. I wonder if they're going to have, if, if you're only going to, I mean, it would be weird to do, but again, I could potentially see it if you could only go one direction around the park, too. Like you can only start in eventually under, but then that would screw up Fast Pass. So I don't know that that would work either. So, you know, Diane's got a great, great answer for the Peter Pans. Mm -hmm. Cleaning you know. cast members. Yeah. On so intermittently. So what about this is actually a great idea you know mm -hmm. like you have a cast member write it clean it through one cycle and then hop off boom you're on yep yeah great idea yeah yeah that's true would they be in normal costumes or would they be dressed up like peter pan oh my gosh <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh, that'd be cool. that's a great that's a great thought okay so we what uh small world you know every other yeah. road maybe yeah. this is super inefficient but you could totally do small world absolutely yeah. Uh, meet and greets kind of we talked about yeah, that yeah i don't know about that fill her magic you could do again totally do fill her magic yes yeah. fill her magic would be mm -hmm. fine mm -hmm. all right so what about um dumbo you could do dumbo back in storybook circus yes just yes. every other dumbo or something and you could do uh, goofy's barnstormer if you want i yeah. uh, cram myself in the thing all the time i don't know why <laughs> I think so. it just kills me okay so that's done uh tomorrowland the cars are actually good for social distance yeah the, the speedway that's true. They are mm -hmm. fine. People mover will probably be fine. Uh, People move goodness, knows, goodness knows we're socially distanced anyway, because half the times there's a cone in the next car. So <laughs> it's not a Twitter account. No, yeah. You're face to face in the people mover, but you're face to face with your party. Right. So, I mean, I'm never with a stranger when I get in the people mover. So I'm fine there. Um, space will be interesting. How do you think space looks? Ooh, I mean, Cause you gotta, you gotta cram yourself in there. So I would say maybe, ew, you know, cause it, you're kind of touching other people in space. So maybe leave a row and, you know, leave a, leave a car in between party members. Or, I you know, you space like one party per rocket. Like even if you're Absolutely. a solo dude, five empty seats. What do you think, Pam? I mean, because it's inefficient, but it's safer. I mean, I think you got to go the conservative route every time in these days, you know, at least for the first few months. 
Yeah, I think so too. It, it'll be a challenge. It just will. I mean, that's the thing yeah. they're going to look at how to make it operational and still not diminish the experience and not just mm -hmm. be, you know, crazy. I think that space, since those, they only sit three in each car and then you have two cars together. I think it will depend. They'll maybe we'll see an adjustment in cues in terms of your party size, like True. those with three or less here and yeah. those with more than three That's here. That is a good idea. So then they know how to sort of break things up. And it, we may see that with other attractions too. That's a great idea. Yeah. This will be a fun show actually just to look back on. Say, <laughs> yeah. Like, I mean, because we have no clue. Like we are just totally no. shooting at the hip. With and this. the only thing we have to base it off of is what we've seen in Shanghai. So and yeah. it will only a week into that, you know, it's yeah. not like we're months and months into that operation either. So this right, exactly. Kind of okay. So what about, we kind of talked about shopping on main street. So that'd be the same. Uh, counter service dining. Are we kind of leaning towards they're going to super encourage mobile ordering or oh, yeah. mobile ordering is mandatory for a period? And I think mandatory is tough because you got language barriers, you got uh, technological barriers. You know, everybody, not everybody's walking around with an iPhone 10, you know, so or 11. So, That's true. What, I don't do you, think they can, what do you guess on that? For let's start counter service, Ricky. Thoughts on that? Like, I don't think they can ordering stuff. Like well, that. they are doing it at Disney Springs, you know, starting. Like, I know that they're they've said that, uh, like Deluxe Burger will be mobile order. So, I can see them going that route. Um, but you're correct. I mean, not everybody has an iPhone or you know, an Android or something like that. So, um, it is, it, it would be a little more difficult to say everybody has to do a mobile order, but I, I definitely think that um, they are, if they don't strongly say everybody has to do it, they're going to strongly suggest it. Let's put it that way. And as for seating, um, I think that uh, they will kind of like they used to do. Um, I think they'll seat you. Yeah, exactly. I, I was going to say, I bet you money they will seat you. Um, when you're done, because that makes the most sense. And that's that way you can, you know, and your table's clean, you know, like this, a cast where you come up with your tray of food and they see every tray of food and they say, okay, sir, uh, follow me. And they, take and I wish they, you know, <laughs> maybe that'll be something that they continue after all this because well, that part yeah, would totally. be nice because God knows I've sat at a filthy table lots of times while I've been at Walt Disney world. So, got you. Yeah. Is, but yeah, here's the thing too. I hate COVID for this reason too mobile order was still in February. I know. Like, I secret. Like there'll be such long lines and I'd be like, boop, 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 choo. ultimate fast pass due to a Ronto wrap every time. I, yeah. I need a Ronto wrap. I keep talking about them. Oh, all right. So Pam uh, thoughts, counter service, and then also address table service. I think table service won't be that big a deal. This be spread out. I think that's easy. Agreed. I think that they'll have certain locations where people can sit and not sit based on the party size and whatnot. There'll definitely be some open tables in that space. Counter service. I was wondering, you know, they have had those touch screens at different times. And at first you might think, oh, that's bad because you have to touch it but they can absolutely sanitize that in between. Think of all the things that you end up touching when you're out in public. I mean, you know, when you use your charge card, everything, like there's all these different things. And the if as long as they sanitize in between each thing, it could be something that helps them out because then they don't have, you know, they don't have to put the plexi shields between the cast member and every, I, I don't know. It'll be interesting, but all, so many of the quick services, especially at the Magic Kingdom, are so tight together. Like really and truly, you're right there with somebody during the ordering process. So that'll be a challenge. Yeah, definitely. I, and the other thing I think we're going to see go away is for at least temporarily is like the toppings bar, the, you know, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, I know it's, it's killer, but you know, what like, about, what about buffets? Cause we're going to talk about that at the resort. We're going to do one of these shows about the resorts too. But I mean, our, cause I don't know. I mean, I heard in Vegas they're taking away buffets. I, I don't know. I'm that's, trying to think. I haven't been to a buffet here in Georgia. I mean, I think here in Georgia, it's the best example of what I could, because I've been a few places. Um, so like, I do have a little bit of knowledge of kind of how restaurants are working here. Um, I haven't been to a buffet restaurant. I did see, I think like our local CC's sent me an email and they said that they would hand you slices of pizza and stuff like that. Geez, I'm, we don't have one here. Anymore. I love it. Um, it's awful pizza and I love it. Um, so like they'll, 
they'll hand you the pizza or whatever um so like they are doing there are buffet restaurants that are doing things that are a little bit different um so if they instead plate your food for you which i know we've talked about we don't love the idea but i think that that would be the way to adjust to that to adjust to it um but back to uh you know the counter service and the toppings bar like we had you know we i've been to a number of like quick mexican quick service type mexican restaurants around here local stuff and you know that what not taco bell actually <laughs> good <laughs> mexican restaurants mike um and like like i went to one today and usually they have like a toppings bar that's set, you know set out and instead they have individual little containers that they hand you now of the toppings so i can see them easily doing something like that of okay here's your mustard here's your ketchup here's your you know here's all the condiments that you'll need um, in that regard, you know, here's the packets, um, instead of, you know, the giant t tub of ketchup that you would normally, you know, squeeze till your heart's content. Yeah. And if, if, uh, you know, if, if liquid cheese wasn't something that, <laughs> that was, was, was gone before it would definitely be gone now. So, um, uh, yeah, I did see though, uh, I think I saw it yesterday that wind jammer, which is the, uh, buffet on Royal Caribbean, they're going to not have, uh, mm. like serve yourself. So, I mean, yeah. it, it makes sense. I mean, because I think, I think you can still do buffets, but I think it's exactly that where cast members plate your food for you. Yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. kind of a good balance. Yeah. You start to pick and exactly. You know, grubby hands and everything. Right. Right. Or at least you got to have a driver's license to go up to the buffet. Not saying <laughs> people with driver's licenses are cleaner than a kid. No, trust me. Man. They are not. <laughs> got to have some kind of sanitary license i don't know it'll be interesting though we'll talk about the other parks but i thought this was kind of a fun conversation just to think about you know the good news is most of the stuff we talked about modified but still a quality experience and the attraction you know some things may change slightly but that's just how things are going to have to be i mean our life's been shook up as uh elvis would say we're all shook <laughs> wow <laughs> elvis reference uh, wow dad joke Nice. I'm a dad. That's yeah. what I do. All right. We're going to get out of here and let you get on with your Memorial Day holiday weekend. I'm so glad I know now. It's, uh, <laughs> he did not know when we started, but he does know now. Wingsuit season snuck up on me this year. And I got 1419 <laughs> right now going on. So it's not good. COVID-19 doesn't just stand for the year, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly right. All right. Well, hey, we hope you enjoyed today's show. Give us the feedback tonight on Facebook, facebook.com slash Be Our Guest Podcast. Join us at 8 o'clock Eastern, 7 o'clock Central. Give us a call. You know, if we're right, let us know. If we're wrong, let us know. We'll have a conversation. We'll have a good time with that. Uh, don't forget the show is brought to you by the Magic for Less Travel. So when it comes time for that next Disney adventure, and adventure's out there, and it's going to happen here soon, drop by the Magic for Less.com. Check out all the great trip planning tools, resort guides room layouts, all the dining plan information, everything you need to make good decisions. And then while you're there, fill out that free, no obligation quote form and an agent will get back to you right away and you'll be planning that next trip. So check them out today over at the magic for less.com. Also, please use our Amazon affiliate link as often as you can be our guest podcast.com slash Amazon. You get all your prime benefits, cost you nothing extra and every purchase helps everything we do here on the show. Again, be our guest podcast.com slash Amazon. Give us a follow on social media, Instagram and Twitter at be our guest Mike and at be our guest pod. And of course, Facebook.com slash be our guest podcast. And do join us every Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Tuesday night on Facebook, eight o'clock Eastern, seven o'clock Central. And also don't forget, check out the Magic for Less YouTube channel. It's pretty awesome. Great videos over there to get you through your Disney fix. It's over. Just go to YouTube.com and search the Magic for Less. All right, we're going to jump out of here. And of course, we'll be back again tonight for the live call-in show. And we'll be back again on Monday with the trip report as we do. So have fun. Stay safe until we see you again. For Pam and Ricky, I'm Mike. Happy summer. Stay safe, stay healthy. We'll see you real soon. <laughs> I forgot what I was going to say. Awkward <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 pause, awkward pause. Okay, get out. All right, that's enough. Okay, cool. Well, that, that worked out pretty well. It wasn't bad. Yeah, It was. I think it was interesting. I think Please, it'll be interesting on. to see what they do. Yeah, I agree. We don't know. It will be. We don't know, but we're guessing. So that's yeah. always what we do. <laughs> All right, Meredith. Hey, thank you. It's reassuring seeing us. We it's reassuring Aww, doing that's these nice. things. That'd be fun. That is. All right, Wade. We'll talk to you tomorrow night. Wade. Wade calls in. All the Yay! Time. Wade up in Lincoln. Awesome. Alfred's always the first call. He's yes. watching in New York. Of course. <laughs> Miss Kay's up in Vancouver. She always talks about it raining in on the West Coast. <laughs> 
Well, it was random like crazy here. So it go. is it All is right. stopped now, which is good. Of course, as the podcast ends. So. Editing in Chilito's got a roll. All right. All see right. Bye. See you guys. Bye, everybody. Bye. See you, everybody. Bye.